In this lecture, you'll learn about thin provisioning, which is a way that you can make it appear to your clients that they've got more storage available than the actual physical storage space that is really on the storage system. Thin provisioning allows you to present more logical storage to clients than the physical storage which you actually have. So let's say that you have got 20 terabytes available. You can actually make it look to your clients that they've got 40 terabytes of storage. Instead of allocating space up front, storage space is dynamically allocated to each volume or LUN as the data is written. Traditional provisioning pre-allocates storage, whereas thin provisioning provides storage on demand. And this allows you to move from a just-in-case to a just-in-time model when you're purchasing your disks. So let's see how this works. Looking at traditional storage allocation first. So let's say the organization that you're working in now does not have a centralized storage system and instead you're using disks inside the server chassis themselves. Now, I know in a real world environment, if you were doing that, you'd have multiple disks in each server in a RAID configuration, but to make things easy to explain and understand, let's say that we're just using one disk in each server. So you are in charge of purchasing and the server team come to you and they say that they want a new server and it's going to require 200 gigabytes of storage space. But you've dealt with this server team before and you know that they commonly underestimate the required storage. So you're going to put in some overhead there just in case there's not enough and you're going to purchase 400 gigabytes worth of storage for this server. But the problem is that you can't buy 400 gigabyte hard drives, so you end up buying a 500 gigabyte hard drive for that server. And if you look at the utilization now, the request was 200 gigabytes. That's what's expected to actually be required, but you've ended up paying for 500 gigabytes worth of storage. So of that 500 gigabytes, 300 gigabytes is actual physical hardware that you've paid for and that is being wasted. And to compound the problem in this organization, they probably don't just have one server, they're going to have multiple servers. So this problem is going to be multiplied. So you can see if they had 10 servers in the same situation, 10 times 200 gigabytes is two terabytes worth of disk space that is actually required. But just in case you need more than that, you ended up paying for five terabytes worth of storage. So you've got three terabytes worth of storage there that you bought just in case that is actually being wasted. So we can use thin provisioning instead to greatly improve on this. And for the same situation again, when we use thin provisioning on our centralized onto app storage system, what we do is we configure those 10 500 gigabyte volumes and we present each of those 10 servers with 500 gigabytes worth of logical space. But actually underlying that, we've only paid for two terabytes worth of storage. So that's what we think is actually going to be used. We only buy what is actually going to be used. And then if later on it does turn out that the server team underestimated the amount of space that is required, we can buy additional disks then and add them and that's going to be completely transparent to the clients. So rather than buying our hardware ahead of time, just in case, we end up buying the hardware as and when we need it. So it is just in time. And as well as the benefit of not having to pay too much early, we get additional benefits in that disks tend to come down in price over time. So because we're buying them later, we're going to get more value for money. Also, we're taking up less disk space, so that requires less power and cooling. So we get additional cost savings there as well. Now, one caveat when you're using thin provisioning is you do have to monitor more carefully. 
when using thin when using thick provisioning, the free space reported in the volume is the same as the physically available space. So it's easy for storage admins and the actual users of the storage to see when the space is running out. The users themselves can see when they're running out of this space and they can tell you, the storage administrator, that you need to correct that. But when using thin provisioning, you can run out of underlying physical disk space in the aggregate while clients still report free space available. So the actual user of the storage might see that they've got disk space left available, but the aggregate fills up and then they've actually run out of disk space before they knew it was gonna happen. So this places the onus on you, the storage administrator, to make sure that you do not run into that problem. So you need to monitor the space utilization more actively and make sure that when you are using thin provisioning, that your aggregates do not run out of space. So let's see how it works down at the physical level. So in the same aggregate, you can have multiple volumes there and they can all be thin provisioned or you can have a mix of thick and thin provisioned volumes. And the way it works is that the disk space is allocated to those volumes on a first come first serve basis. So let's say that we create volume one and volume two and we write some data for volume one to the storage system that will get written to the aggregate. Then we write some data for volume two, then for volume one, then for volume two and so on. So you can see that the disk space is being allocated to the volumes first come first served. Then we create another new volume, our volume three, and we start writing to that and also to volume one and volume two. And again, you can see that the disk space is being allocated there first come first served. And it's possible that we could actually fill up the aggregate. When that happens, none of the volumes will be able to write to it anymore. How much space each volume got in that aggregate just depends on who was writing data at what particular time. You can, of course, limit the amount of space available to a volume when you set the size of the volume. And as I mentioned earlier, you can mix and match both thin and thick provisioned volumes in the same aggregate. So this is the same example here where we've got two terabytes of the aggregate, that's the actual physical space, and we have got 10 500 gigabyte volumes. But now in the example, two of those volumes are really important and we want to make sure that they do not run out of disk space. So we configure those two volumes as thick provisioned. And what happens now is they actually have that 500 gigabytes each reserved in the aggregate. So that takes up one out of the two terabytes. The other one terabytes worth of space is gonna be allocated first come first served to the eight remaining volumes. So those eight other volumes, they could actually run out of space when they've only got 100 or 200 gigabytes at the volume level because the aggregate is full. But the two volumes that we thick provisioned at 500 gigabytes, they are guaranteed 500 gigabytes worth of space. So they're not going to run out before that. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp Storage Complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.